Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose why I want hey, yeah, yeah, yeah! Hey, hey, folks. Oh, it's Tuesday. We already got yelled at by the neighbor across the hall, so we're a little nervous. Oh, shit. That was too loud also. Fuck. We gotta leave. This is the last episode ever of the history of the podcast. Uh, I'm <laughs> quitting comedy. I'm moving to Wyoming. Oh, yeah. I've never been, but I watched their football game this weekend. It seems nice. We gotta get a cabin in the mountains next to a waterfall, because uh, we gotta flew the coop on this place. We Bye-bye, were, wallpaper. We were in the, the, the kitchen. Yeah. Or what's it called? The, the Kitchenette. Kitchenette. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Break room? Tiny kitchen. We're in the kitchenette, which is about... A mile and a half from here, <laughs> like seven yes. office blocks away. Way down the hall. We got yeah. back here. Chuck has been here since 9 a.m. because he's got mental problems. Uh-huh. And evidently the neighbor the neighbor, said, oh, Christ, these fucking guys are here. <laughs> he, said, like he said, um, he's like, oh, these guys are here. Fuck. Or maybe shit. These guys are here. Shit. And he slammed the door. Uh. Slammed it. We're here an hour a week, you cunt guzzler. Come on. We haven't been here in two weeks. We haven't recorded in a while. It's great to see you. It's nice to see you. It's very nice. (laughs) I'm like, it's kind of a downgrade. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) But this room. We go back a ways. It's the whole vibe. It's a bummer. I'm the so scared to fuck. talk. I, didn't know I feel like my episode. dad's home. He's going to hit me. I didn't know if I should sucks. be honest or not. This episode no, sucks. No, you did the right thing. <laughs> no, you did the wrong thing. I didn't want to know. <laughs> no, but he's a divorce lawyer. I might need him one day. Ah, jeez. One day. You're going to need him in December. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that still on? Are we doing that? i got to book a ticket. I still haven't gotten the the venue, but it's still happening. I haven't booked my tickets. I keep forgetting because you know you get all the gigs. You book in the gig, and then every day Cantor. By the way, Cantor's already there. I think he's like <laughs> camped out, like it's World Series tickets. <laughs> he's working at Tipitinas. He's like uh, Rob Williams. He's good <laughs> <with> hunting. <laughs> well, it's funny because for some reason comics feel like they have to let me know. I got a text with Soder. Just book my hotel. All right, good for you. Hey yeah. Stavros, just book my flight. All right, great. Hey Sam, just book my Airbnb. All right, I'm like. Just come. Sam's just not going to be there. I'll tell you that right uh, now. There's no way he's going to make it. I told him he could do time. <laughs> he's going to be. He's going to be at that like altar with one of those back braces where you're upside down, like <laughs> Michael Keaton. <laughs> it's, it's all back with him. It's all back and neck. <laughs> ah, the neck and the back. My neck. He had a piece of his spine back. removed, I think. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he's a mess, and he's 31. There's someone else. Oh, Ronan's got back problems now, too. I guess we're just at that age. And, and Chuck has back problems. Oh, really? That's right. Remember I was out for a while? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. I'm doing good, though. I'm right away. Good. Okay, yeah, you're back. You're fine. And you never talk about it. You're not Jewish. Whoa. Easy. Jesus Christ. Tippy-toe. By the way, Ronan Hirschberg, my, my dear friend. Is he Jewish? Did a show in Madison, ah. Madison, Wisconsin. Comedy on State. I'll be there December 8th through the 10th. One of the best the in the 11th, biz. Whatever day. December something. Get tickets. Ronan does his show, and then did Chuck just do blow? I'm just doing a quick nose thing. Oh, all right. Uh, sorry. Jeez. I'm sorry. So we go. He goes to Madison, does his show, does a meet and greet afterwards. Mm. A guy walks up to him, and we might have to bleep this. Oh boy. A guy walks up and says, "You're pretty funny." For a Boop. whoa, and hands him ten bucks. Whoa, the K word. Wow, the K man did it. The, I mean, that's hardcore. That's a hate crime. Well, that's he gave him money. Also, he donated to the the fund. I guess, but if you go, you can't just walk up to a black guy and say, "Hey, you're an N word," and hand him twenty bucks. That's maybe true. A, maybe like a hundred K or something. We should try it. Yeah, that might be a good uh, Patreon. Queef, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, K K bomb right to his wow. face, hands him ten bucks, and keeps moving. And by the way, not only is it horrible, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like Jews invented that's comedy; true. they're the funniest. That's their thing. But did he do it like, hey, you're pretty funny for a uh, and as a mean thing, or like, I'm shocked you you you, you turned me. 
I think he was trying to be fun. I think he's probably one of these podcast guys that like comes up to you and is like, "Hey, Norman, you fucking uh, autistic fag," and you're right. like, "Oh, hey, okay, thanks." And he's like, "I, I yeah. heard you on the roast or whatever." And that was my agent. They think um, they think that it's they're roasting. I right. think right because that's like like that's, that's crazy. just below N word. Yeah. Right. And oh, completely below N word. Right there. But the problem also is Jews get no love for their oppression. They get no oppression points. I and know. They've been horrible. They've been exterminated. And, uh, you know, I used to throw their yarmulkes around. And they don't get any the points for that. I know. I think because they're white. That's they're, they're, what it they're is. They're white. But, yeah, I mean, not that long ago. Six million. That's a myth. Fried. Yeah. Killed, shot, and dead. black, and retarded, and uh, gay. Yeah, yeah, a couple other uh, sprinkled in, but uh, you know, very inclusive. Yeah, but yeah, wow, that is hard. Poor guy. I hope he's uh, dealing with it okay. I oh, s- he's fine, of course. All right, because I, mean, I, I call him that every time I see him. So. Sure. Well, it just goes to show you, it is just. I mean, it's horrible, but it is a word. It's yeah. a it's a fucked up word, just like the N word. I know we do this thing now, and this will get me in trouble. Where we go, I said the N word, so. This guy needed therapy, and you have to put him in jail and cut his arm off. And you're like, it's still a word. Like, right. You know, let's not act like it's got a, a wizardry, grand wizard, or well, a Harry Potter thing. I think if someone's going to call you a racial slur to your face, that's the best case scenario. They hand you money, they say it quick, and they leave. And mm. it's only one of them. Right. If it's like a thousand of them, and they got like, you know, broomsticks or yeah. lighters or whatever. Then you're in Charlottesville. Yeah, exactly. Then you're in trouble. But uh, God bless you, Rana. Check out the special, by the Killer. way. Killer. It's called uh, Jokes, Jokes from, from the, the Underground. Underground. It's on YouTube, and boy, it's it's hot to trot. Directed by the great Matt Salak. He's oh, one of the best directors out there. He's so me. good. Big fan of his work. So and check it out. Check it out, folks. I saw Ari get called the K-word the uh, about a month ago. Really? So maybe it's an epidemic. Boy, maybe well, it's you, coming back. Everything is cyclical. Yeah, exactly. So uh, be careful out there, our Jewish lovers. Yeah, because uh, the guy... Filmed Ari on, he was filming him, so Ari said, put the camera away, and he said, fuck you, and then they had it out afterwards, and then... Oh, that's right, I was, there. I, was I saw him that night. It's a good, it's just the go-to, because you want to hurt the guy. Right. And you want to say, hey, what can I do? It's like when your girl goes, you got a small dick, and you're like, well, that's just true. Well, I think, I also think people aren't aware of that word as much, because I was mm. hanging out yesterday, we had a little backyard hang, quite a hang, and... Uh, there was a woman there who was like, I never even heard that word. I don't even know what that word is. Oh. Which I was like, what? I yeah. Was like, I, got, I got it tattooed on my mother's back right. uh, a couple weeks ago <laughs> right. for her birthday. That's where I jizz. <laughs> um, right on it. But she was like, I don't even know that word. So I think if people aren't as familiar, or maybe they don't realize the, uh, the stank. Well, I also think it's kind of like canceling. If you cancel somebody, you actually give them more attention. Jews get called the K-word, and they're not like, Doing a press conference about it, so mm. it's not out there as much. Right. So the the N word, it's feel like all you hear. He said the N word. The Papa John's, the Netflix guy. This guy said it. That guy said it. So now it's out there, baby. Now you in the back of your head, you kind of go, maybe I'll say it. Well, this is one of the issues with uh, this is very on Tuesdays. We're in we're in a weird depth here, but well, this the, is the, the lawyer. I, the lawyer's freaking us out. Killed the boner. This is one of the things. That the Jews have to deal with, and I think I've talked about this before. It's a frequent talking point: is they have all these people that hate them and are like, "Fuck you, yes, we hate Jews," but they are also perceived as doing so well, successful. It's like, yeah, oh, big deal. Someone called you the, uh, a slur. You run the banks. You run right. the money. You have money. You're privileged. You have this money. So it's a weird thing because people yeah. are like, "You're less than us. You're shit. You're insects. Yes. Fucking exterminate these pieces of shit." Did and they that? also have the "You control the weather and the banks right. and the money and showbiz." Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. But it's fucked up because they had to overcome and then do that. Mm. You know, so it sucks as they they got they got shit on, they got spit on, they got thrown out of neighborhoods. But then. They got it together. They started making f- fucking clothing and, you know, uh, being lawyers and shit. And, and, and then they made it. And comedy. And now they're getting penalized for doing well. Yeah, it's very strange. It's a bummer. I don't understand uh, life. But uh, anyways, Ronan's great. and uh, Just glad to be white. And uh, we're scared to 
death of this guy. Oh, he he's, he's ruined the whole fun. It feels like dad's home. We can't jerk off. You got to watch the porn real low. He'll walk in. Well, it's the worst case scenario because, you Hopefully. know, we want to be liked. We're people pleasers. Yes. We want love. We want approval. And to know that just a few inches away, there's somebody that hates us. And Ooh. that's and then there's a guy behind Chuck, too. Who also doesn't like us. <laughs> yes, exactly. This guy's brutal. And uh, and he's a lawyer. He's a man with a job. And we we work next to him. We, we can, can see him. him. He, he can hear us right now. God, he might be like Tuesday. The guy across the hallway, by the way, has got to be 350 years old. Oh, and I think yeah. he doesn't mind us because he can't hear shit. I think that's Biden's dad. Oh, my God, he's old. Yeah. But all right, let's try to get all into right, it. Right, we'll get the right. volume low. I was in California. You were in California. Sam was in California. The big three yes. all over Southern California. Ooh. We're having the time of our lives. Sam seems not... Great, but nah, he's not having fun. But we took over the whole goddamn state. But the jokes are amazing. He's the best. Check out the Netflix. God damn it, we were all there, and it would have been fun if we could have all got together and fucked. Yeah, you you think about that, but then you go, well, I'm in Irvine, he's in Brea, you're in Hollywood. You got to drive. Sam can't drive. Uh, it, it was a whole thing. Plus, you were in Brea. Sorry, I flipped that. Huh? But you get in that hotel. I was by the pool. Sam's like, should we hang out? I'm like. Well, we wouldn't hang out in New York. Right. And I'm by the pool, and you're ugly, so uh, we, we bailed. Oh, that's good, yeah. I, I was in L.A., but I don't know if we were there at the same time. I left Thursday. Oh, I got there Thursday. But there's some people, several people, that went and saw the big trifecta. You got that right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some so. couple of queefs out there must have spent at least a cool five hundo on, on, on seeing all a bunch of yucks. Well, we, we appreciate We thank you. And I got to tell you about uh, Los Angeles. I don't know where to start, because I got all this stuff. I got a film festival, L.A., I'm gay and uh, Seattle. Yeah. Oh, you did Seattle too. Well, I didn't do Seattle. I went to Gig Harbor, which, by the way, some guy wrote to me. He's like, "Get better at promoting, you piece of shit." I heard the door slam. Oh my god. <laughs> he said, um, some, "Some guy was like, some guy was like, get better at promoting. I live in Seattle, you piece of shit. I would have seen you. <laughs> You're yeah. Fuck you. I hate when they do that. Don't you hate that? But they always like, do that. I had to write to him and be like, hey, take it easy. I just went to a football game and fucked my nephew. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, you want to be like, hey, you, you check the, the website. It's all up there. It's Give all, it a goog, you fatty. It's all pipes. Look at my Insta stories. I'm putting dates on Insta. I don't know how to reach these people. I think I need an email list. Yeah, yeah. My email yeah. list doesn't work. <laughs> and, uh, it's about was, time. That was working. Yeah. <laughs> was it quieter? Yeah, it was way quieter. Oh, okay, I great. Think he, I think maybe he left. He probably went to lunch. Ah, oh, lunch. Oh, man. That's lunch. Let's hope so. Oh, I think I think we should call ahead and be like, slip a note that says, hey, we're podcasting. Go get a couple. Of, we'll put like 20 bucks in there. Go That's kind of considerate That's to give bad. him a heads up. Not bad. Yeah. And then he'll know we're trying and maybe he'll ease yeah, up. Yeah, we could slip uh, a note today under the door. We could say something nice today and be like, hey, hey hope we're not yeah. Yeah. Loud, we're whatever. assholes. Maybe we'll get him free tickets to like the stand or the, something. The live app. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'll be like, so we're at this office. His neighbor's a cunt. <laughs> but yeah, for the folks at home. Ah, God, I'm terrified he'll hear this. But he is... The angriest guy. We hear him yelling on the phone to his wife or his lawyer or his bookie or Saddam Hussein, whoever he's talking to. But he's angry and he's yelling and it's terrifying. Isn't it weird that lawyers have lawyers? Oh, yeah. A dentist has a dentist. Therapists have therapists. True. That's so weird. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Kooky. But any jizz. So I went for the West Coast swing. I'll get to Seattle in a second, but I went down to L.A., I hadn't been to L.A. in like three years. And you know me. I'm an L.A. lover. I love L.A. I love that song. I love Randy Newman, one of the great satirists of all time. Oh, yeah. N-word. Many N-words. But, yeah, a lot of people don't know he's a satirist. It's just mm. hilarious. Um, I know. Well, he's a good songwriter, too. Like, uh, he'd be cleaned up on Pixar. Oh, I got yeah. a friend in me, which is a great song for us fucking. Great song. He's great. I love Newman. Newman, Newman. Uh, but anyways, I went down to L.A. and I hadn't been there in years because of COVID and all the bullshit. And I was about to go there. And since the get go, I've always been one of these guys. Like, I'm not a New York comic who's like, fuck L.A. I hate L.A. Right. Blow me L.A. And I always say, I've given the speech. I'm like, what is it you don't care for? Uh -huh. The 72 degrees, the blue skies, the mountains, the ocean. I guess the it's fun. the homeless, the traffic, the bad comedy, uh, the, the no pizza after 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's that. And the fake people. The earthquakes, the gangs. Yeah, the, the mudslides, the fires. Yeah. 
The phoniness, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah L.A. sucks. The smog. Yeah, the airport stinks. The sports fans are horrible. Yeah. You can't get in and out of the stadium. They leave early. They come late. Exactly. The, night- the woke. Yeah, the woke. Yeah, night stalker. Yeah, yeah. L.A. There's, blows. There's, there's some problems with L.A. It's not great. Yeah. But I like it. I do too. I like whatever yeah, you like, but right. um, big fan. But you know, we went down there, and it was fantastic. I'm so excited. And then as soon as you land, though, the memories flood in. Because I used to be there every two, three months for years. That's right. You go. I mean, I did Corden. I did two Conans. I did the Netflix half hour there. We did the roast battle there. We did a live La- Tuesdays at the Improv. Last that Comic was Standing. great. We did Last Comic Standing. I've done Last Comic Standing twice there. That's right. That and hotel, that Hilton up in Burbank. Oh, I love that Hilton. Ah, oh, great Hilton. Some of the best nights of my life there. Hell of a Hilton. And uh, boy, I just, I, I love it. Great, great memories there. Yes. And so I fly in. I'm all excited. And I'm only there for like a day and a half because I'm a fucking idiot. I'm so bad at showbiz. Me too. I'm, in, I'm at Gig Harbor for five days because I'm like, I got to see my niece, my nephew, my best bud, his wife, who was another close bud. Five's a long time. Five. Daddy. I'm an idiot. And I was like, I'll do a day and a half for LA. This is why I can't get ahead. This is why we go. I go to my show and there's eight people in there. I, I'm Because right I'm, I'm out here riding fences with the kids. I'm pushing them on the swing. Right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm eating them out. I just, I, I love these little, these little buddies. I'm noogieing. Yeah, they're hot kids. Kids. And then I go down to L.A. and like Santino's like, what are you doing? You want to do the pod? And then like, you know, Burr's like, why don't we go fuck in the ass? And then someone else is like, come do my show. You want to do my show? Ah, I assume you're here Friday. You should have flipped it and flopped it. The ah. two days and the five should have flipped. Well, I'm going back at the end of October. I'm going to do a whole thing. I'm going to do two full days there and five days in Gig Harbor. There this time. we go. A little uh, better. You got half a day. Well, it's Halloween. We had to shoot a little horror movie with the kids and all ah, the stuff. And that'll take an hour. Whatever it is. So we get to L.A. and the first, I, I had a little Norman Sam in my head because the first day I'm there, I got nothing nothing booked, Jerry. I haven't seen John again, Tommy John. Ah, oh, the J-Man. One of the great comedians of all time, if you ask me. Hilarious. That'd go TJ. Uh, He's the best, but uh, he's writing on TV shows. I'm sure he's amazing at that, too. I don't really watch much TV, but I can (sighs) tell he's great. great. Yeah, he's a beast. He he actually got me my first manager. I owe him a lot. Wow. Good, good egg, that Tom. Hell of an egg. Hell of a comic. So Please come back, for God's sakes. There's only seven good comics. Yes, we need you there, Fatty. So he's like, I cleared the schedule. I haven't seen you. This is my day. And I go, okay, great. Let's meet up. But the night before, I'm sitting in a child's bed going, what am I doing? I'm a fucking idiot. I'm masturbating in a nine-year-old's bed. Yeah. She wasn't there. Thank God. Until I finished. Uh. So I'm like, I should have booked something. And then the woman at Laugh Factory had reached out uh-huh. like two weeks earlier. Oh, there you go. So like literally like last second shot at the buzzer, I email and I'm like, any chance you still got a spot available? Oh. And she goes, as a matter of fact, I do. Hey, and look I go, at that. Okay. Now I'm in the game. Good man. I'm going to the Laugh Factory. Making Day two, moves. I'm doing Burr's Pond. I got two shows at the Improv. This is a hot, hot little L.A. nugget we got here. Very exciting. First show sold out. Second show almost sold out. Very fun. Very exciting. Yeah, Quite a, a thrill. A lot of gays. So I go down. I meet up with Johnny. We go to the V-Cut, a little cigar place ah, next to the Improv. Right We've on Sunset. There. Or Melrose. Melrose, yeah. So we go there, and uh, he's a regular. And Kyle, shout out to Kyle. Big Tuesday. Hey, Kyle. Work in the cl- he, he offered to open it up late night after my shows, but I'm old. And uh, gave me a couple free cigars. Big gay. Hey. The show. All What's right. What's up, Kyle? Praise Allah. Great to see you. Great to meet you. I'll be back in a few weeks. See you then. So we sit there. We have a cigar. Then he orders Chipotle. What? On uh, Seamless. Oh, order. Kyle. So not Kyle. Tommy. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, Kyle sucks. Kyle, you blew it. Tommy, I think that's what they call Ron on a Kyle. He orders... <laughs> He orders Chipotle. We're sitting. I got my feet up. I'm smoking a bat. Yeah. We got a, I got a second one on deck. Woo! Bat on easy deck. there, Silent Re. I know. And then I eat like the hottest burrito I've ever had. I shove that in my ass. Yep. I, I can't even talk. I still sound like fucking, you know, Tom Waits. But, sure. Uh, burrito, couple cigars back to back. But then you have the thing that always happens. Now it's like 7.55. Ah. We got a third cigar lined up. And I go... How do you feel about taking me to the Laugh Factory? And yeah. He's like, why don't you blow it off? What are we doing? They always do the blow it off. I know. We're in like we're, we're in sweatpants. Our shoes are up. The, we're talking ah. women. We're talking comedy. It's the toughest moment in history because you're like, I should do the set, but 
Nothing beats this. We're on cloud eight. I know. It's a good cloud. Not bad. Underrated cloud. Yes, yeah. I got some pictures of the cloud. So here's the other thing. Do you worry about all those? Your I wife do. Your just naked all over the cloud? All over the cloud. She's squirting all over that hibiscus. No. <laughs> what is the cloud? Serious. A serious radio. A cumulus. Cumulus. Yes. Hey, I cumed on her. <laughs> kind of lingus. Yeah. So, um... So, oh, so I was booked on the Late Show at the Laugh Factory, mm-hmm. the 10 p.m. They email that day, and they go, the 10 p.m.'s canceled, which mm-hmm. part of me is like, hey, all right. Mm-hmm. But they go, we want you to do a set in the early show. We got Joe Coy coming. Oh, he's He does big. a lot of time, and he's huge. You got to get on before him. Russell Peters is also on. Gee, another fatty. So it's a star-studded event. Yes, a lot of brown. And so I'm like, all right, so now I'm on the early show, which is kind of nice because I go to bed early. Mm-hmm. So I, I begged Tommy. I'm like, I'll give you $1,000 if you take me over there. Because you know you want a buddy. Yes, yes. You know that feeling when you're out of town and you're like, of course. Come on, someone come with me. Yeah, and you've been hanging already, so you built a good bond. Yes, yeah. and it's hard for people to understand. When you're on, you're in a different city, especially L.A., yeah. when L.A. comics come to New York and New York comics go to L.A., it's almost like high school. Yes. I wish there was like a, a, a Delta status, but for comedy, Ooh. where you could have a little thing that's like, hey, I'm, I'm Diamond. Yeah. So people are like, oh, welcome. That's great. Come on in. That's great. I mean, you should have that with the TV credits, the years doing it, the specials, the uh, accolades, the anal, but that, apparently that doesn't matter because you can't see it. Exactly what I mean. You can't walk in and be like, I've been on Conan twice. I right. got a Netflix special. My hour has $8 million. I, I do pretty well. You have to be like, hi, I'm a comic. And like, who's this douche? You wish there was like a hat. Yeah, like a Joe Friday where you just flap that leather flap open. And then they go, oh, geez, he's, he's diamond comedy. Yeah, something. So we go to L.A. So now on the early show, we go there. And I'm just a nervous Nelly. I don't know anyone at the Laugh Factory. Tommy's there. He hasn't done stand up in forty eight years. Sure. So we walk in like two. We're two white guys with glasses. And right. We're like, I'm on the show. Well, excuse me. And they're yeah. like, Yeah, I go to the green room. So then you go to the oh, green okay. room, and it's like there's like twenty five of the coolest L A black guys who uh-huh. all know each other. Of course. And they're la- They're like this. And another the, oh. ah, another round of strawberry for me and my friends. Yeah. And you walk in. Yes. Record scratch. Who are the honkies? And nobody even goes like, hey, welcome aboard. How do you right. doing? Like, and so we just sit in the back of the booth like this. Like we're just like, <laughs> oh, and you try, hey, fellas, <laughs> what's shaking? Hmm, how are you there, my brother? <laughs> it's horrible. And I got liquid death sweatpants and oh. New Balance. And and they are all got like the super sneakers and the oh, oh, yeah. like, what's leather up? jackets and the fingerless gloves <laughs> yes. and a, a dangly cross earring. They're yes. hip. Secret handshakes and oh. flat build hat. They just look good, and they yeah. all know each other. There's like 30, and they, more people keep coming. Oh, they're so hip. They grab a drink, but they pop and lock and yes. pick it up. You know, It's too cool. They do a break dance. And, and Tommy's like, let's just get out of here. I mean, I, I, he's like Costanza. He's like, right. I'll make a back injury. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm like desperately, te- Ali Makovsky was supposed to be on the show, and I'm texting her, and I'm like, are you coming? And she's like, no, I got canceled or whatever. Oh, or whatever. Because wow. the second show. Ah. And then she's like, are you on Rich Voss's phone? And I'm like, what? She's like, why are you texting me from Voss's phone? I'm like, I think he put the numbers in, right? Oh, weird. The lines are crossed. Whoa. She thought it was Voss, which is weird because I've been sending her dick pics. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, why does Voss have herpes? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? So I got no friends. Anyways, eventually, the host, whose fucking name I forget, I should know it. Ah. Uh. He comes off stage. He comes up. Could not have been nicer. And then it just takes one. He comes mm. over. He's like, dude, they asked me if you'd be on the show. I'm a fan. And he knew Tommy. And he's like, I'm going to put you next. Couldn't have been nicer. Introduced me to everybody. Joe Coy, who had met oh, before. Wow. And all the, all the comics. Full like, House he, or? What do you mean? Like uh, the, the show TV is, show. Yeah. Uh, no. Sh- is it an audience? show is packed. Oh, great. Packed. I guess with Coy and Peters, you can't go wrong. It was packed. And so then he introduced me. So immediately you feel better. And then I went on, had a great set. That was awesome. Russell Peters was there. He's like, hey, I watched your special. I'm a fan. Wow. Yada, yada. We great chatted. Guy. Great then, guy. He's like, this is my friend uh, Royce. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you, Royce. And then Royce was like, oh, man, you're, you're great. I thought that was funny. And then uh, Russell goes, you a baseball fan? And I was like, I'm like a huge baseball fan. He's like, that's Royce Clayton, ah. who played for like the Cardinal, the Red Sox, all these people. And I was like, what? Oh, my God. And then I, I, I chatted with Royce Clayton. Whoa. How do you like that? All right, Royce. Yeah, Royce. Rolls Royce. So Yes. 
That show was great, but I feel like I, I, I'm talking too much. Go no, this is good stuff. Over. I love the uh, fish out of anal. I love the uh, New York guy in L.A. Because that's a good room. That when that laugh factory's popping, there's not much better. Yes, it's very good. Hot room, hot room, balcony. It's like tight square box in there. I mean, that's where the Michael Richards went down. That's all I think about the whole time. I'm like, it happened here. He was yes. here, and the, the moment when he came off stage must have been like, oh <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. That got me into comedy. <laughs> so. uh... Great, great stuff. Yeah, L.A., there's that, there's that uh, nip in the uh, night air. Don't you love that L.A. weather when you see the palm trees and the mountain in the back and that sun is setting? Woo, I love it. Yeah, it's the best. And then uh, afterwards, we went back to Tommy's house. Beautiful. Oh, oh you good. You got to see this thing. My I believe God. it. Went to the backyard, smoked another cigar. I had like four cigars Jesus that day. Jesus Christ. It was bad. So no, no wonder you had a booze problem, because just the cigars you're overdoing. So with the alcohol, you get it. I know. It's hard to uh, concentrate with that watch. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be another hour. They said they sent me another one. We'll, we'll see. That's on its way. But uh, then the next day, so that I stayed in Hollywood. I got a little hotel over in Hollywood, which was nice. That is fun. West Hollywood. Yeah, you don't want to stay in Hollywood. Yeah, even better. The uh, gays. Hollywood. It's so funny because if you never go there, you have this idea of Hollywood. I know. And then you go to Hollywood and you're like, this is the worst place I've ever been in my it's life. It's gross. It's grimy. There's a there's a, a film on it. No pun intended. Yeah. But. Hey, hey folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. You know it. You love it. And that's our sponsor. Sometimes you can fixate on a problem for so long that you never take time to find a solution. It can be tough to train your brain, so stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. And how do you do that? Well, you learn how to find your own solutions, and there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, make it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. You got to do therapy. The bags are piling up. You got childhood trauma. You're all effed up, and... uh, you got to fix it. So might as well get therapy and might as well do it the easy way. Stay at home. Get on a Zoom. Nice and easy. It's online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat sessions. You don't have to see anyone on camera, or you can. And it's more affordable than in person. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Today, get 10% off your first month. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash Tuesdays. Get on it. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon, folks. You know I love my Raypon Raycon ear buds. Whew, that's hard to say. There I've been listening go. to a lot of We Might Be Drunk lately, and it's been great killer podcast. You gotta get involved in that thing. And the best way to hear it is to hear it on my Raycon wireless earbuds. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are comfortable and they will not fall out. Raycon's offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to. Let you be immersed in sound or hear your surroundings. you got choices, folks. Mm -hmm. I love to use my Raycon's. The other day, I was out for a run with my Raycons, and I'm running, really picking up the pace. I like to run my negative splits. I really kick it in at the end, and these things don't move a muscle. I've worn uh, other ear pods that will fall right out mm-hmm. anytime I bend over to stretch or anything. Then they're on the ground, and then you got crap uh, on your earbuds. It's the worst. Here, but here. Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. That's insane. Mm. They give you the same audio quality as other premium audio brands at half of the price. Mm. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays today and use promo code Tuesdays to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays with code Tuesdays to score 15% off. Buy Raycon. Dot com slash Tuesdays, code Tuesdays. Here, here. I got to tell you, so I had a very different L.A. intro. Mm. So I, me being the psycho bad showbiz guy, I go, hey, I'm doing the Ur- uh, Brea Improv, which is about an hour and 15 out of L.A. It's a nice suburb. And my agent goes, beep, 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 beep. Do you want to fly in a day early and do Bakersfield? 
And he goes, oh, I don't like the sound of that. Driven through there. Not pretty. Yeah, it's an old oil town. It's flat. It's dry. It's full of meth. It's like my ex. So I was like, ah, this is tough. All right, fuck it. I'm in. So you leave New York. You land in L.A. You get on a bus. You go get a rental car. You wait in line at the budget. That line at budget is crazy. You know, it's that little rat maze, you know, and everybody's got their luggage, and we all hate each other, and it's hot, and you want to kill somebody. And you finally get up, and they go, you want the gas? You want the insurance? No, no, no. Give me the keys. You jump in the Kia, and you just drive two and a half hours to bake. Oof. LAX is a nightmare. Oh. Any comic works the road from LA is beyond me. Yeah, I will say, as you, you grow a little as a comic, you start finding that Burbank airport, mm-hmm. the uh, the Ontario airport, Van Nuys. These are nice little hidden gems, because that LAX is a... Trash heap. Yeah, P.U. So you drive to Bakersfield. Drive to Bakersfield, and once you get to Bakersfield, I got my Delta pin on, I mean, or my diamond pin. They're like, oh, Mr. Norman, ho, 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 because you're the mayor now. Yes, that city. There's no stars there. No. There's no Seth Rogen and Johnny Knoxville and the other guy. No, no, you got that right. Uh, everybody looks like Seth Rogen, but there's no celebrities. So they're like, I got put up in the Padre, which is like the nice hotel. Like this, this is where Seinfeld stays or Kevin Hart. I'm like, great. Wow, you know you're in a bad neighborhood when the nice hotel is called the Padre. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, what is that? The Father? Yeah, yeah. I stayed at El Nino last time I was there, yeah. and uh, wasn't great. <laughs> well, so I'm inside my father, and. Uh, you know, we go to this show. It's a brewery, which is always a gamble. But don't you have that weird little tickle in your taint that uh, that uh, that adventure? And you go, well, this could be horrible, but let's let's see what happens. It's like a, it's like a bar fight. Like let's see what happens. I might get my ass kicked, but let's go for it. Yeah, I just did the one in Raleigh that you told me was good, and then once I booked it, you said sucks. Oh yeah, that's bad. <laughs> How was it? We talked about it. All it was right. pretty good. Okay, yeah, but, yeah, okay. I'm saying I, I relate to the brewery. Business. Yeah, Jim but it, Brewery. It, it's it's like a fat chick. You're like this could be. Stinky, but we're gonna go for it. Yeah, I did a lot of breweries in my day. Oh yeah, and there was some stinks. One of them right in front of you. That's right. That's yeah. right. Still Old th- brewery. Still think about that. Brewers yeast. So uh Milwaukee Brewers. You get to the brewery, you don't know how it's gonna go. It's this giant warehouse with the big vats and everything, and you're like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> but I look on the wall, there's a headshot of like Theo Vaughn and Joey Diaz and Whitney oh. Cummings. So you're like, Oh, uh, this is a thing. People yeah. have done this. But, of course, they live in L.A., not New York. That's the that's the rub. <laughs> they didn't go 2,800 miles. To no, do it. no, exactly. But the guy knows comedy. He also books the theater, the Fox. Mm. And he's telling you all these stories. Like, Kevin Hart flew in, did eight shows, on a pri- and flew out on a private jet back to L.A. every single night. And you're like, oh, wow. Wow. And he's got ten guys. They're all working on the material. So you get all the fun inside stuff. Uh, he, uh, I have a rider. Do you have a rider? I think, but I never looked at it. It says yeah. di- somewhere, because they just make a, a generic one, uh-huh. and it says Diet Coke. So everywhere I go, there's Diet Coke, and I've never drank a Diet Coke ever once in my whole life. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. I was just like, ah, jerky, tequila, granola. You know, I just said a bunch of shit I like. Maybe I should work on it. I should get a rider. Get the rider in there. Michael Ryder. Get, get your tea, your, your cookie. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yes, yes. Then you don't have to stop for it. Mm, I okay. like the stop. Yeah, I like the you stop like a at the duty free shop. Yes, yes, your habit of anal. Yes. So, uh, you get back there. There's two other comics. These guys are both great and nice as hell. And you're just in the back of a brewery chatting comedy with these two guys. And then there's 400 people out there. You go on, and they were hot as a pistol, wow. rowdy. And it's one of those. Thank you for coming to Bakersfield. Yes. A lot of that shit going on, which it's like is a always USO. nice. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh, it's one of those those gigs where you're just amongst them. Like you go out to the bathroom, you're just using the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So then you see eight twos gays, you all cross the streams and piss on each other and high five in the bathroom. It's a little awkward. They always want the picture, and you're like, all right, we're next to the urinal. I did a bathroom picture. There you go. There's no shame with the photo, people. And I felt good. This one girl comes up to me. They're bringing me up, and she goes, hey, can I just get a photo? And I go, all right, sure, sure. And he's like, you've seen this guy on Netflix. So I'm like, all right. There we go. And she goes, it's a little dark. Can we go in there? And I just go, I can't do it. And yes. I walk on. It felt good. Yes. Show me your tits and you get a photo. There you go, tits. Fucking bitch. So we oh. we do the uh, we do the Q&A at the end where I, I after about 10 minutes, I go, uh, all right, you guys have any questions? And that's when the whole thing went off the rails. Oh, boy. Because they were being good eggs with the brewery and the booze and the beer and the Bakersfield. 
But once I opened that can of jizz, it was just, woo-wee. Yeah, kill yourself, you fucking hobo. Hey, this oh, guy, uh, Chuck's gay. Uh, what's up with Liz? Uh, Sam's a You know, all this shit. So it just got Jeez. crazy. And uh, bleep that. Yeah, and, bleep uh, all the Ks. Yes, yeah, K. Okay. So, um... Yeah, it was just a wild time, and then you uh, they all think you're going to drink with them after. I That's believe the other me. thing, which is a th- I think we got to just stop doing is assuming comics are hanging. We do our job. Our job is the stand-up. I know, but, but enough comics do right, occasionally. Right. Yeah, yourself included a couple times. Well, we'll I've hang done with it. these folks. And uh, and then I got people being like, "Hey, you want to go to the movies tomorrow?" Yeah. I'm like, "What are you insane?" There's a lot of that. Like, you want to get? I'm getting socks. You want to get socks with me? You're like, wait, how do I get here? I'm like, stand up. I'm like, if you knew how little I hang out with my closest friends, exactly. Like, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's a great point. Then then this is the other epidemic. The guy in the front going, "I had this on two shows over the weekend. Happy birthday, front row." And I'm like. Was it your birthday? It was my birthday a week ago. Oh, so I'm geez. Like, I, I, well, you got to tell somebody it's your birthday. I don't care. I, I feel terrible. But it's one of those things where, like, it's a week old, first of all, so this is moot. But you just want to let me know that you know. Of course, You don't yes. actually give a shit that it's my birthday, and you're ruining the show. You're yelling out. So it's a shitty yell because you're like, I hate you, but you, you're trying to be nice so I can't trash you. Right. It's a bummer, but... Wow, well, happy birthday. Hey, thank yeah, you. I just want you to know that I know. Yes, I could have used you. Oh, jeez. What day is it? I got to write this down. It's the 18th, whatever that 18th. was. 18th, wow. Yeah, what's today? Did you know? 26. Yeah, I texted him. Oh, jeez. Oh, he really did. But yeah. what, from Facebook or what? Um, You don't just know his birthday. I rem- Yeah, I know both of your birthdays. When's my birthday? December. That's not even close. <laughs> I don't know. Not even close. July? Yeah. Not even close. June. No! We're doing pretty good. I think it's May. No, your wife is May. Mar- March. No! Not even close. You guys suck. <laughs> How many I months had a big are birthday, there? too. 40, maybe. Oh, the big 4-0. Oh, 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 no, January. No. <laughs> We're running out of Which months it's here. It's embarrassing that you pretended to know, and you and you weren't kidding. You said it earnestly. You're like, I know both your birthdays. Yeah, you did say and that. You meant it. <laughs> yeah, that this is. I you I said did. it I totally. I don't genuinely. know anybody's birthday, and totally no one genuinely. cares. Oh, April. It is Maybe. April. Yeah. It is April. Yeah, because yeah. you're a Taurus. April sixth, right. Aries. Ah, uh, Spears. <laughs> Which I think, yeah, I think you make that joke every year. <laughs> All right. Well, see, <laughs> I remember. You're like, uh, what's this toes? In, um, you know, uh, uh, fucking uh, Broadway, uh, Danny Rose. No, I love West Broadway Side Danny Story. Rose. No, Best in Show, ah. Fred Willard. And he goes, the guy goes, yeah, I remember you making that joke last year. <laughs> it's when the guy he lifts up the tail <laughs> and he goes, he's never taken him on a date first. And he goes, yeah, I remember you. Making that joke last uh, year. Oh, that's. Well, I wonder if that was off the cuff too, like from both of them. I think both of them probably. That's amazing. Those guys are so good. But, but anyways, happy birthday! I'm gonna put it in the mental cl- calendar. Got it. September 18th, <laughs> 1983. I guess you hit the snooze. <laughs> oh, my but, God, it. Yeah, 9-18-83. There you go, folks. Yeah. Write that down. And what's your social security? I always forget that one too. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got a new one. Um, <laughs> so uh, so that was fine. We did the show, then I hightailed it out of there. And then, now get this, and then we'll turn it back, turn the ball back to you. I'm doing my uh, Brea shows, mm. but I wake up in, in, in Bakersfield, and you just want to get up and get out of that town, sure. you know, like Bruce Springsteen. And I go, I have Howie Mandel's podcast at 10.30 a.m. No kidding. That's how Howie likes to do it. Well, now the glove's on the other face. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So uh, I drive all the way to L.A., get to his podcast. Huge warehouse. I mean, you know, this guy's a zillionaire. We had a great pod. No kidding. And then he's a funny guy and a cool guy. And you get why he's so successful. He does it with his daughter. She's cool. And the son is in the booth. He's the Chuck. Oh. So it's like a whole family affair. They're all Ks. And they go, he goes, uh, what's your website at the end? Like, give, it, give a plug. And I go, ah, it's Mark Norman Comedy. He goes, why don't you have Mark Norman? I go, ah, some real estate queef took it, and he wouldn't sell it to me. And he goes, let's call him. It's one of these kind of shows. Uh-huh. And you go, ah, you can try to call him, whatever. So he starts Googling, and he gets a bunch of numbers of Mark Norman's. He calls another one. The phone rings. Hello? Hello, is this Mark Norman? No, but this is his mother. 
Now my mom's talking to Howie Mandel. Worlds what? are colliding. I couldn't Come handle on. it. It was like a, a fever dream. Come on. So I was like, oh, hey, mom. She goes, what's going on? He goes, Mrs. Norman, this is Howie Mandel. She goes, ah, <laughs> which I thought was great because she doesn't give, you know. She, you she can't, care, you yeah. don't, you can't do well with my mom. It's a, it's a ball against the curtain. I, I can't wait to meet this lady. Is she coming oh, to the wedding? Maybe. I'm gonna really bring the heat. I'm gonna be like Jerry with the uh, Estelle Costanza. Pachyderm. I'm coming in with bits. All right, good luck because she's uh, i I'm gonna win her over. I can feel it. I might, I might cut in and dance with her, dip her. Fuck her. I don't care. Yeah, she hasn't RSVP'd yet, so don't get your hopes up. But uh, she is. I, I'm when I got to. It's fun introducing girlfriends to her because they're like, "Ooh, that was tough." I'm like, "Yeah, welcome to 18 years of childhood, you whore." Yeah. But yeah, so. Pack, uh, Packy Derb. Uh, my mom calls or whatever. Howie Mandel calls and she's like, "Yeah, how you doing there, Howie?" And he's like, "Yeah, Howie Mandel." And she's like, "Yeah, I think I saw Bobby's World in '88. Who cares?" And he's like, "So we have your son here." And she goes, "And I mean, it's wow. it's classic, classic stuff." I'm like this because it's just so uncomfortable. And he goes, uh, "What do you think of your son?" She goes, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Are you proud of him?" She goes, "Yeah, yeah, proud of him." And then he goes, uh, "What do you do? You like his career choice?" And she goes, "Yeah, he's funny." It was just comedy gold and awkward and uncomfortable and cringy. And uh, then she hung up and that was it. Wow. I got I to gotta check this out. It's on now. Is it up? No, nah, it it's not up yet. I don't think so. Okay, but well, it when was... it comes out, I'll be sure to. Uh... But we have my mom saying she's proud of me on recorded tape. So okay, that, that's the big go. win. That's something. So that's then nice. he goes, can you sing us a song? So she starts singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then he gives his dates. Mary Had a Little Lamb. Well, she was on the spot. Yeah. Oh, She's right. not a comedian. Yikes! But uh, wacky, wacky day, and then then we we talk comedy for like an hour after, which is always weird when you do a pod and then have a better conversation off the mic. Yeah, but a lot of it couldn't have been repeated. And then uh, then I drove to Brea and had just a killer weekend with uh, five sold out shows with Caleb Sinan, who featured, who is so underrated. This guy is such a killer. I don't know why he's not bigger. And uh, Laura Peak hosted, and she's blowing up. She's hilarious. And oh, we just I met her the day before. She must have done those. Great egg. I don't know her. I, I just said, "Hey, hi, nice to meet you." Oh yeah, she's a she's a peach. And we just had this the best time in the green room, chatting and drinking. And it's one of those things where we're like, "Tonight we're going out," and we end up sitting in the green room till like five in the morning. Those are the best hangs. She's best. a she's a peach. Ah yes. Peak. Okay. Peach. I'll take it. Yeah, it's I'll not take great, it. but something. You know, it's something. Now, that's that's an ideal hang to me. We're staying here. We're staying put. No need to go anywhere. Then you're all walking. Then yes. you're, it's a bar. And then you're bumping into people. Exactly. And, it's and loud. Kooks. Just green room. I, I'll sit here all day. I can't today, but you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Love it. And I, I uh, felt good because me and Sam started talking about how uh, we're too busy. We have no time, blah, blah, blah. And then Rick Glassman hits us up and goes, why don't you come in L.A.? We'll have lunch. We'll both do the pod, and then you guys can leave. And I just said, I'm not doing it. Oh, that's nice. I can't, because that, that's a whole day. It's easy for you. You're at home. You make a little lunch. You record, then we leave. We got to drive from Irvine. We need to switch, because that guy's hit me up nine times to do his pod, and I'm like, ah, I don't think so. Yeah. But now I'm, yeah. Like, I'm flying back to L.A. I'm going to do Rick Glassman and Bob Santino. Woodwind and, and Santino and Cosby, whatever other shows. Yeah, who like, else? I, I got to get it out there. Get it out. I'm so. out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it. L.A. was a blast, but how about this? <clears throat> Tuesday's Stories is brought to you by ExpressVPN in 2022. It's shocking how every parent hasn't installed ExpressVPN for their kids' devices. Any weirdo could be tracking your kid virtually. Right. Yeesh. It's simple for a stranger online to find your IP address. If you've ever clicked on a sketchy link, and I know I have, your IP address could be exposed. Who knows what kind of creeps could physically track your kids down using their IP address. ExpressVPN hides that. Just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button to turn it on, and you're protected. Even an eight-year-old can figure it out. Pick from over 90 countries to reroute your IP address and watch shows and movies on Netflix from any of them, like Reservoir Dogs, only available on Netflix Canada. Huh. I use ExpressVPN on my iPhone whenever I'm at a hotel or airport. Oh, yeah. I love ExpressVPN because it gives me peace of mind knowing my data is secure. 
So secure your family's online activity and unlock tons of new shows by visiting expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Use our link and get three extra months free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays. ExpressVPN.com slash Tuesdays to learn more. Back to the show, folks. Oh, we wanted to plug the Patreon also. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Patreon. before we go back to the show. My God, before we get back to the show, which is a great, the second half of this show, forget about it, folks. Oh, come well, don't on. Don't forget about it. Remember it. But uh, Alzheimer's. Patreon. Tell them yes. about the Patreon. Patreon. Well, we got hot new beauties every week. We got content. <laughs> we got queefs. We got uh, anal. We got a googs. A new show. Oh, yeah. New show is up oh, now. New show up it, now. It's, it's called awkward. Give It a Goog. It was painful. Mark and I were upset with Chuck. <laughs> yes. More than usual, even. <laughs> exactly. And uh, he made us watch these old videos from 2005, 2006. Yeah. We sound uh, different. We look different. It was brutal. Yeah, it's But we rough. think you'll like it. It's up yes. there right now. Join the Patreon. You can join for three bucks a month. Oh, yeah. Is oh, what a mistake that was. But yeah, it's old found footage. It's wacky. It's weird. You get to see the roots and where we we all came from. It ain't pretty. But. Yeah, yeah. You guys are looking back at your career. Everything that's recorded. I'm hoping to go through. If you guys want to stick with, give it a goog. <laughs> uh, we'll do it for you guys. It's you, painful you like for it. us, you but want we to like do it. you, you and we're do doing it, we'll it for do the it. people out there. So check it out, folks. But, Tell us what you think. Comment, yeah. like, subscribe. Yep, tons of stuff on there. Five hours of recent documentary footage, past year. It's so. Oh, I should take my sweatshirt back off. That's all right. You're I still. Up. No, you're uh, still in the ad. You're still in the ad. I know, but they're going to fast forward through this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, they fast forward through the Patreon. Know. They might not know. No, I think if they see it, do a big crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah. God. yeah. Wow. Get on it, folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Patreon. Patreon. Oh, my God. I mean, if you like found footage and weird shit, you're missing out. Oh, if you're not on it. Patreon now. See how I come. I'm such a cunt, so... Sunday, my flight is at 6 a.m. out of Ontario, California, connecting in San Fran, and then to Newark. It was an eight and a half hour travel day. I got no sleep. Literally, I pulled an all-nighter. I was just laying in bed going, and I never went to bed. Then you're like, I'll sleep on the plane. The whole thing was a nightmare, but uh, flew coach back, made it, got back, wanted to kill myself. And here we are. Well, that's the thing about this West Coast. Cause yes. I, I'll tell you, I go to Gig Harbor. I'm, I'm hanging with the kids and my buddy, and I'm like, I think I can move here. I want to live here. There's like 75-foot trees and crystal clear water. And, oh, yeah. And you're just hanging out, and everybody's nice and pleasant. Yes. How do you do? Well, nice to meet you. I know. And you got the yard and the driveway. We're in the backyard. There's stars. I'm smoking cigars. We've got a campfire, and laughter. But the road, you, you you fly. My flight is like literally scheduled. Like your flight's twelve fifty p.m. out of LAX, and you land at nine thirty p.m. Exactly, You're like, that's a full day. Full day, you lose the day, and that's why I do the six a.m. People go, "What are you crazy?" I'm like, "Well, at least I'll land at six. I have right. some." life left in New York. Oh, you need a red eye? And if you're on the road, you got to fly out the night before. Yeah, you really do. And I think about that with, like, Seattle, too. You're like, there's nowhere even close. Like, no. here, it's like Syracuse, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, Detroit. Philly, These are all 90-minute flights. Yeah. Some of them are two-hour drives. Seattle, it's like you got Portland, Vancouver, and that's it. Even L.A. is a three-hour flight. Yeah, you got San Fran. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's short at two hour. But flight-ish. yeah, you're right. There's not a lot of cluster up there. No cluster and uh, a cluster, cluster fest, cluster fuck. Uh, so any jizz. So day two in L.A., I go out to do Burr's podcast. Yeah, I was, listened, which was great. Thanks for listening. Not that many people. It's short did, and sweet, it feels baby. Like. I think it only got like seventy five thousand views on YouTube. Everything I do, I'm like, this is gonna really. I think it'll grow. It'll it'll get over two hundred eventually. Maybe his yeah. audience might be audio. A lot of it. Uh-huh. Like, I think he, I think he usually audio does audio. For a long time. That's yeah. true. And then went to video. I think it's just a picture of his 
red ginger Irish face. I looked at a lot of the comments, and they're like, video? When did you get video? Why do you have video? What's with the video? And most yeah. comments are like, why isn't Louie here? And you're like, what does that mean? We're, he's not here. I shouldn't have written We're that. different people. But yeah, I don't get it. I get that all the time. Because we're talking about the movie, they're like, this is bullshit. Burr and Louie hate each other. They don't, by the way. Yeah. And uh, they're like, no, Louie. Yeah, everywhere I go, they're like, where's that other guy? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to kill myself. But anyways. And then the other half are like, how, do, how come you hang out with that guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Win. Exactly. But uh, went out to L.A., went out to... Um, Burr? Burbank. Bill Burbank. Oh, hey, there you go. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I wanted to open with that, but then I was like, ah, he might not be that kind of guy. He's going to go, you planned that. You've been sitting on that for three days, and you're like, okay, I'm sorry, I'll blow you. Yeah, it was weird. So we go there, and then I get the Uber there, and I'm always like, I'm, I'm always compulsively early. So I get like an Uber to like a Starbucks down the street, and oh. I'm just like sitting at Starbucks until like an ex- a- appropriate time to sure. arrive. It's like we're doing the pod at 2. I'm there at like 10 a.m. like down the street just like. Oh, my God. So then I take the second Uber. I get there, and I get out, and Jim Florentine's standing there. <laughs> at his house? Which is, uh, this is at, at their, the Bucks. This is at the studio. Oh, the studio. Oh, it's a studio. It's a studio. It's not his home. No. Smart. So I get out, and I'm like, Jim? And he's like, hey, this is crazy, huh? And I was like, this is crazy. It's so nice to see a New York person yes, in L.A. Yes, it is. Hi, Joe. How are you? So <laughs> so we go in. Now I feel better. I'm like, okay. And then Burr's there, and we, we all hang and bullshit. Do the pod. It was so nice. He said such nice things about oh, me that no one listens. He really licked your balls. Really gave me a nice, check it out, for God's sake. He gargled them. So I do that, then go back to the uh, the hotel to get ready, because I got a big night. Improv sold out. Shout out to Aaron, uh, the the booker, the tall blonde Aaron lady. Aaron who we bumped into at V-Cut the night before. Oh, I love that lady. She is a sweet, sweet woman. So nice. Tough broad. Gave me my first TV spot. Always grateful. Go do the show, and I got Fahim Anwar Woo! opening. Who, opening. Well, we talked about him before many times. I, this guy might be my favorite comedian. He should be headlining. I am on the floor. By the way, headlines all all over the country, of course, this guy, joking. all over the world. But I'm like dying laughing. He's pure joy. He's gold. He's wacky. He's silly. He's a hilarious Indian. He had a great. I don't think he's Indian. I think he's Afghani. Pack. I think he's Afghani. Afghani term. Or maybe he's, is he Afghani? He's definitely not Indian. Really? Yeah. I could have sworn. I think you might be right with the Gan. I think Afghanistan is where his parents are from. Give it a goog there. We looking that up? Dog. Sure. What's the name again? Fahim. F A H I M. Anwar. A N W A R. He's from Seattle. What is it good for? I'm trying to write the description as we go now. All right. Pretty sure. He says, I think you might be right. right. Los Angeles base. Let's see. I, mean, I don't think Fahim is Indian. I think that's... Uh, ah, who knows? Something. Here we go. He's an Uber driver. He's part of a Muslim family. Oh, says. yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty good for uh, Afghi. Let's see. Well, Afghan. Okay. I think like this is dead air. We should probably all just right, keep moving right, right, here. Right. But when you see a, a country of origin... Yes, yes. But again, he's like the most American guy. He's like a Seattle guy. Oh, he's adorable. Guy. But anyway, parents were born in Afghanistan. Hey, oh, I yes. take it all back. I hate the Indians. Yes, but uh, <laughs> but anyways, I, he's one of these guys, just pure joy. I'm watching, and you, you're kind of like, I'm about to go on, so I'm looking over my notes, but I was like, let me just scope this out a little bit, and I'm, I'm guffawing. Yes. I, I, I'm just giggling, and, and just brings me joy and... Hilarious. I, Funny I know I've guy. blown him all over the podcast for many years, but he's great. He Luke Monez is oh, on the show. I love the Just a great hang. Monez, Monez, Monez. And then, uh, oh, my friend Lindsay Adams, who's also great, hilarious. And we just had a good hang. She came and picked me up, which I appreciated, because it was one of those things where you're like, I guess I'll walk, but I'm yeah. afraid of kooks, and yeah. then you take a lift. And Yes, love a pickup. So she scooped, and it's always nice to see that friendly face scoop, because you're just in the hotel for like hours being oh, like, I got the show, yeah. oh my God, I'm freaking out. I, I felt anxious. Yes. Because I've never like done a big show in L.A. No. And there's other people coming around. I feel like you've done it in L.A. Well, did I did like the belly the room. Belly. We did our pod at the improv. Yeah, but those are like, this is like, I'm headlining. That's it's true. sold out. It's the improv, the whole thing. And so they got an all new setup upstairs, like this little hidden green room. I've thing seen that. It used to be the office. It's, it's like an Anne Frankie. Yes, attic. that's what I kept saying. Ah. So we had a beautiful hang, and then Henry Phillips comes ah. over. John again comes ah. up. So it's like me, 
Monez, Fahim, Lindsay, Henry, John again, and it, we're, we're exchanging the stories. Uh, all up in that little treehouse? All in the treehouse. That's house. a tight space. First show was great, sold out, ton of Tuesdays, packed. They're like, oh yeah, pop when you come out. Hell yeah. Then the second show, you're like, okay, I wish we didn't even have a second show because the first show was so right. good. Second show, not sold out, but full. Okay. Killer! Yeah. Best show of my life! Woo-wee. They were on fire! There was two gays, and then regular gays. There was like a whole row of regular gays, like yeah. hot LA gays. They're like oh. shaved chest with the shirt open and oh, some yeah. of that makeup, and just look like beautiful. And I'm like chatting with them. They were like just howling, laughing. This crowd was on fire. I feel bad because so many gays came to the first show, but the second show was the best show. Interesting. I wonder why. I wonder why that how that plays out. Because you think the 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 rabid gays would get the tickets early. So they would be the hotter, but maybe not. But this is my old theory. A lot of times, the biggest podcast fans aren't the best stand-up fans because ah. they're like, up, they're like this. Hmm. Oh, I remember when he talked about that. So huh. true. I know he's talking about that. I bet he's talking about uh, soda on that one. Yeah. I think it's a little more digest. And the lesser, not lesser, but people that aren't as obsessed. Yeah, are like, oh, I know that guy. He's funny. Let me check him out. And maybe there's a whole thing of a, uh, oh, it's sold out. And then they're like, wait a minute, they put on a second show. Yeah, I'm going to the second show. And they're pumped. That could be it. It's they a got later in. in the night. Yeah, who knows? But um, mm-hmm. just a great hang. I went. Oh, I forgot about it. after I did Burr's podcast. This is another fun thing. So Chris Walsh, one of my close friends, played Uncle Marky in the movie. Go see the movie or buy it, whatever. He's my my closest LA friend he lives in Glendale so as soon as I get off the podcast Burr's pod you know how when you finish something you're like I just gotta get out of here yes yes I don't want to be lingering and then they're like we said goodbye why are you still here it's like a one night stand you just want to go yes so I just immediately get a car to Glendale and I'm like I'll text Chris on the way I text Chris I'm like I'm on my way to Glendale and he's like he's got had like an eye infection Mm. he's all fucked up he had some problem and he's like I can't really hang until I see a doctor so I'm like shit I'm already in a lift to Glendale yeah and it's like out of the way because Hollywood's the opposite sure. direction. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just eat Shake Shack in Glendale. Yep. And then I remember Henry Phillips moved to Glendale. Ah, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. So I text uh, Henry and I go, I'm about to be in Glendale. Any chance you're around? He's like, I'll walk right over. That's 10 minutes from my house. Woo-wee! He meets up. We just roamed around Glendale. Ah, a nice. million laughs. This story, that story. I told him about the bachelor party story. Oh, yeah. of those, And he was like, wow, that's insane. And we just had a million laughs. So it was a great trip. Yes. I'm coming back in a few weeks. Woo! I love it. By the way, that bachelor party really imprinted on a bunch of people's anuses. Because everywhere I go, bachelor party, tell us about the bachelor. How was Bert? Who died? Who said the N-word? <laughs> like, it's just crazy, wow. fun stuff. That really uh, resonated. What a time to be alive. we got to do it more often. I mean, that family dinner that last night oh, was primo. Something so, special. One yeah. for the books. Yeah, we got to get more hangs. I, feel, I was thinking about this the other day. Where are we at with time, by the way? Oh, okay. oh, beautiful. I was thinking about this the other day. When I was in high school, and I'm sure I've mentioned this, I'm sure we talked about this, I was the freest spirit. Yeah. I was, first of all, I was like the most popular kid in school. I was like, I was doing well as an athlete, not uh, well as a student, but I was just having a great time. I loved everybody. Yep. Most of them loved me. Sure. I had the time of my life. I had. Literally zero anxiety or stress. Come on. I'm telling you, I felt like a million bucks. I had the time of my life. I felt but, great. But are you looking back with rose colored queefs? No, I'm telling you. I was I had no problems. All right, because you know, you always see that one guy who's like, I miss Cheryl. I loved her so much. I'm like, all you did was bitch about her when you were together. Now you're broken up and all you can see is her perfect clam. No, I'm good at this. I, I look back at like the Everett House of Comedy days in Boston and I'm like, boy, that was great. And then I'm like, stop. And I'm like, but I was horribly depressed and having panic attacks and just blackout drunk right. every night. And it was horrible. Yeah. And I had no success and I wanted to kill myself. And it was fun. It was sure. both sides. But high school, I was cruising. And here's a couple things. One, I was running seven to nine miles every day. Oh, interesting. Which was a huge part of it. Very healthy. because I was on a track team and a cross-country team and school, I was with friends all day long every day. Yes. I was in it. And then I had a girlfriend who I loved. And you're just like... And don't forget, zero phone, zero internet, zero social media. So you're not worried about any of that shit. And you're just living. Yes, there was no compare and despair. And just 
hanging out. So yeah. we got to hang out more. Yes, you're right. We Cardio really do. And hanging out. Here, here. Yeah, you need that exercise. You need to sweat it out. You need an outlet. And you need camaraderie, friendship, companionship, yes. anal. Yes, because I, you know, I, a couple of weeks ago, Sarah's been out of town, and I was really down in the dumpy dues. Yeah. Having a hard time. We talked a little bit that week. And uh, then I had a Thursday night, right before I went to Seattle, I went out to the cellar, and I bumped into Colin Quinn. Mm. And a, and a mutual friend of ours, and went, oh, my God, you're just the guys I wanted to see. I sit and bullshit with them. And then, like, Nick Griffin comes in, someone else. I watch Colin's set. He watches mine. We walk over to the VU together. And then Siobhan, my pal Siobhan, he scoops me up because he's driving home. And he's like, man, I've been down. I was like, I've been down. And we start talking about how we've been down. We bullshit. And you leave going, I'm back. Yes. I just needed some good old-fashioned uh, friendship and go, oh, that is, like, that's crazy. I know. Being around somebody is really healthy. And we have that thing where it's, and I don't know if this is a comedy thing, but uh, you see Tom Hardy put out some thing where he was like, being alone is uh, addictive. Because mm. it's easy. You get to right. watch what you want to watch. You get to do what you want to do. You jerk off. You don't have to wear pants. You know, you don't have to shower. You just do nothing all day. That you have to sometimes get your fat ass over the hump, and then right when you hang out with people, it's always better. Always. Yes. You never go, oh, I wish I hadn't hung out with Siobhan that time. Right. I'm mean, sure there's a couple of weirdos out there. Yeah, you got a lot know. of that, actually. But, yeah, but I know yeah. what you mean. But you know what I mean. You need, we're, we're social beings. Yes. You got to you gotta get it out, and that's basically what therapy is, just talking to a guy face to face. Yes, and, and kissing. Yes, and uh, all that, and he fucks you on the couch. But the Siobhan moment is nice because you're in a car together, you're bonding, you're kvetching. That's what life's about. And you feel so isolated because you're like, you've been depressed. I've been depressed. We're both depressed. You think it's just you. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, we had a nice backyard hang last night, yesterday. Not last night, yesterday. And uh, it was great. And I saw Colin again last night. I love the CQ man. Oh, well, he's the greatest. There's no one better than the Q. He is... The best. Yeah. Probably the most important person in the history of my life. Really? Well, I just love him. Ouch. Yeah, hey, what? Uh, September 18th. Hey, you got that right. May 9th. Still mad. What <laughs> bullshit. You saw, you saw it in his face. He yeah, was saying you, it. It was a it bluff. Was so you really it was so genuine. It was so genuine. I believe they knew. You were like, I know both your birthdays, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and you were trying to exert a little superiority over us. That's uh, what was going on. What do you mean by that? What yeah, that you mean? were like, I know both. Because you know <laughs> that we don't know your birthday. And <laughs> yeah. so you were saying it. You wanted us to go, shit, I don't know his birthday. He texted and then you me come out. Birth- Mark texted me on my birthday. I did? Yeah. You I rat. I know that. <laughs> you fucking dirty rat. I have it up on my wall. Wow. Uh, you're a good friend, and I don't want to forget it. Oh, my God. What was but your birthday? Two years. August 2nd. August wow. 2nd. Oh. I knew that. 8-2. Come on. It's disgusting. I'm eating over here. Mm. It's gross. Mm-mm. August birthday. Get real. There you go. 8-2. Yeah. That's LeBron's height. Fun fact. 8-2? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're thinking of William Wallace. All right, I tried to go with it. <laughs> Don't bang your head off the wall. Easy you there. Crazy? You got a big Armenian noggin or Portuguese. Sorry. We need to get fake mustaches and masks Ooh. and eye patches to yeah. leave here. I don't want this guy. I need a wrestling shoes to sneak out of here. <laughs> I don't squeak. But yeah, where are you gonna be there, Only Sloppy America. Jalopy? Oh, I took photos of my calendar so I could. Uh... <laughs> Well, my birthday's not on that one. I'm a retard. Well, nine eighteen. I know all about it now. All right, Hartford Funny Bone. Jesus. Shit, I don't have the month. November fourth and fifth. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. November fourth and fifth, Hartford Funny Bone, and then uh, Omaha Funny Bone. December sixteenth and seventeenth, Madison, my favorite. You know that. December eighth, ninth, and tenth. And then uh, go watch the special, this year's material. I'm trying to get it back in the algorithm, cook it up a little bit. Hell yeah. And uh, go buy the movie, go to 4th of July movie.com, which Chuck bought on my birthday, probably. And uh, I got t shirts now. You can go check out my t shirts at uh, this HTB kick. Hide the bodies.com. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hide the bodies.com. There you go. I got a shirt out there. And uh, join the Patreon. We're doing a ton of shit on the Patreon, literally. Weekly shit. Uh, Chuck, you want to pipe in on the I got, I got a very kooky idea that for a bonus we're going to do today. Okay. I think. Uh-oh. Right, you got to trust me. You got to go. All right. But we have a ton of stuff I mean, on I don't our have Patreon. have to trust you. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff that's uh. only on the Patreon. Okay. Very exciting. Uh, I'll bet MarkDormanComedy.com. Get a bottle of Bodega Cat on Bodega Cat Spirits. I think it's called. And uh, I'm coming to San Jose this week. This comes Ooh. out tomorrow, right? 
Oh, shit. Don't, yeah. San Jose's over, baby. Don't leave your luggage in the car. Yes, I've heard. I've heard. I've, so I'll be at uh, Toronto, the Danforth Theater, and the Royal Oak Music Theater in Michigan with Jeff Asmus, the Roxian Theater in Pittsburgh. That'll be interesting. All kinds of fun dates. Then Orlando, uh, the Rococo Theater, wherever the hell that is, Pantages in Minneapolis, the Neptune, the Moor uh, in Seattle, Portland, Vogue Theater in uh, Vancouver, then it's Halloween. All kinds of stuff. Zanies in Nashville, Boston at the Wilbur, Philly at the Fillmore, uh, doing a show in Ottawa, New Haven, New Orleans, anal, queef, Jews, semen. Thanks for everything. Get on the Patreon. Get a mug. Get a shirt. Go gay. Fuck your dad. And write a nice thing to the neighbor, will you? No.